Hello everybody, this is Mark with The Thoughtful Gamer, and we are doing a three impressions, three questions of the game Union City Alliance that you will see we have here on Tabletop Simulator, given the state of the world. Um, here with me today, we just finished playing, is Orion. Sent over to me, or at least the Tabletop Simulator file sent over to me just a couple of weeks ago. They're running a Kickstarter later in the month, and I gotta say, I was pretty impressed with this game. So, uh, just as an overview, uh, this format is our first impressions format. I used to do written first impressions, but I'm moving it over to video, and we call it Three Impressions, Three Questions because uh, we present three first impressions of the game and then three questions that we will be thinking about. About as we play the game more. So three things we're not quite sure about that we will be interested in figuring out once we delve into the game more. Uh, just as an overview, uh, this is a cooperative superhero game. You can see uh, down here is my area. It is a deck building game with many of the familiar deck building elements that you'll see, uh, including a five card hand like we've got here. Um, each player plays as a different superhero. When you start the game, you just have this center space on the board, but as you uh, play cards to get more movement, uh, attack, and valor, which is essentially currency, you get to move around, explore new spaces, spend valor to get new cards, and attack any enemies that pop up. Each uh, enemy uh, is kind of a, a big boss that you're fighting through. Up here, uh, we played the Toronto Don, which is a kind of mafia-themed dinosaur group, which is kind of fun. Um, and they sprung up and sent many different raptors at us. These guys here, the raptor gangsters, along with bigger mobsters that we had to defeat to win the game, which we barely squeaked by and did. Uh, so let's begin with our first impression. And uh, my first impression of this game is that the theming in the game is actually quite good, both on a, on a micro level and on a macro level. Uh, the theming uh, works pretty well. So on a micro level, you have all kinds of fun stuff, like with the Pteranodons, and you got these events that come up, so this like a cult thing that popped up, and different cards you can get, like I use uh, these poison gas pellets to pretty good effect. Uh, my favorite card... Uh, oh. I don't know where it went. My favorite card was this uh, this thing that popped up and I could respond to an enemy attack by attacking them first. Uh, the enemies are pretty interesting. This is a raptor flapper because it's a gangster thing. So the micro theming is really cool um, and uh, kept us engaged. On a macro level, I think there's a couple of interesting aspects to the game that make it feel superhero-y. The idea that you are juggling different priorities. So like these smaller threats and opportunities uh, pop up, like this one following the clues, there's some kind of plot going on. And if you overcome these threats, uh, you get bonuses, but they're kind of small things. While if you focus too much on those threats, the larger threat gets too much power and they might overwhelm you. But if you don't focus enough, uh, or if you only focus on the major threat, you may not get enough resources to become more powerful by the end. So that kind of juggling different things going on in the city and getting a bit overwhelmed kind of fits with the superhero vibe. Um, and also this idea that once you're engaged in combat, it's very difficult to leave combat. It takes a lot more movement. Uh, I found uh, felt kind of superhero-y. So in terms of theming, I think this game pulls it off pretty well. What did you think, Orion, in, in terms of theming for this game? Yeah, I agree. Um, I enjoyed a lot of the names of things. Uh, I think one of the early events was like drive by attack and the the raptor comes in and, and attacks me and then goes and attacks the other player. Um, so that was kind of fun. There was the the get em boys where a bunch of bunch of them all jump out and attack you. Um, and then just kind of the the themes within the hero. So my hero was very much about moving stuff around so i had cards like graviton wave and dispersion field and escape velocity and whatever um and uh yeah I, I, it did it felt like i was the superhero running around the city trying to you know fight off these crazy raptor bad comic book bad guys um, and it's a it's a little silly in that sense of you know comic book bad guys but i thought it worked well and i enjoyed it 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so Bravo, I mean, it's it's it can be hard to uh, pull off decent theming in a game. I, I find a lot of deck builders end up kind of doing it half-heartedly, and I think, you know, while superheroes as an idea lend itself to lots of fun ideas, I, I think they pulled it off pretty well. So the second impression was the kind of physical components. There are... A lot, there's a lot of small text all over this game, and um, the iconography is pretty good. You have pretty clear symbols for the different kinds of resources and attack and defense and, and movement and so on. Uh, but every card has some small text that you need to read, and in the tabletop simulator, you can hover and just kind of zoom in with uh, the Alt key and you can look at that, but I was constantly having to page over things and see, what is this again? What is this again? Where is this card? And um, w was this the one I was thinking of or was it something else? And I think playing in person, there would be a lot of leaning over the table and handing cards back and forth and trying to remember where that was. So it's, um, it's just part of the game. Um, it didn't stop us. Uh, there was a little bit of understanding how to use tabletop simulator in general since uh for me i think this is the first time i'd used it but there's there's a lot of small text all over the board a lot of cards to read uh and we ignored most of the flavor text um unless it you know really jumped out at us but there's there's a lot of text yeah i mean even on the screen here the flavor text is almost i gotta lean in to read it i just want to show people the rule book i had a really hard time with um, to even like, I, I requested a PDF version because even like the rule book here in Tabletop Simulator, like I can't read some of this stuff unless I really just scrolled in and out all the time. Uh, but even on the PDF, I mean, it's just big blocks of text that was, I mean, look at this. This is bananas. Um, and honestly, it, I had flashbacks to like, the Mage Knight rulebook, which also has a very small font. Um, and uh, I think publishers typically have gotten better at spacing and graphic design on their rulebooks and their cards. This one felt like I wish some of the stuff was just bigger font and easier to look at and easier to read. But as Ryan said, uh, the, the iconography is pretty good. And honestly, once you start playing the game, a lot of it is very intuitive. Uh, we didn't have to look back at the rules very much at all, even though I, I mean, I didn't read them intensively. I was still trying to f get through them like the first pass when we, when Orion got on and we were planning to start the game. So uh, the fact that if you've played a deck builder before, if you've played a cooperative deck builder, in particular games like Mage Knight, uh, you're going to be able to pick this one up super easily. I just wish... And I'm concerned, I think, for players who aren't as familiar with that style of game that they're going to have to read the rules very intently, and that's going to be literally like an eyesore. And then, like, you know, it looks kind of busy. It looks kind of busy here in Tabletop Simulator, and uh, it would certainly look busy on a table. Uh, and I think this game would require a fairly large table, uh, given my guess at how big these components are. Uh, so that's our second... Uh, impression. The third impression is that we are eager to explore more. So overall, we had a very pretty positive uh, impression of the game as a fun experience. I had fun playing, and I feel like we only tapped into a little bit of what the game has to offer. I was looking at uh, their promotional materials. They've got six heroes, I think, to start with. Uh, how many different villains here? They've got three super villains. Uh, but we didn't even see all the stuff in this supervillain pack, nor did we see all the all the components that each of our heroes uh, came with. Um, there's other scenarios you can add on top of it. We didn't do an extra scenario. Um, and just the combination of all the cards in play, I think, can create a lot of interest. And I'm interested to see how far the game goes in its zany uh, superhero-ness. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and that actually leads us right into our first question, which is just how much variety can we get in these characters and villains? And how do the different combinations, how will those play together? Um, you know, my my character or my, my hero was kind of about moving cards around and 
displacing things and your hero was much more about interrupts and they um and defensiveness and uh it's called the gam gambit is the mechanic here where it's when you get attacked you can respond and do something um and so you know that's a couple i looked at some of the other ones and there's just from the hero there's uh one that can kind of lasso in enemies from nearby um nearby spaces there's one that spawns extra items there's one that gets extra stuff when they explore um and there's one that just starts with extra heroism so i i haven't looked at their decks but just where where does this go and kind of how will those combinations play out as we you know play the game more get into it more understand the strategy more and maybe try to ramp up the difficulty with some scenarios yeah for example right we had this gangster uh one and most of the first issue which is like there's like three phases to the game where the threat escalates and it's uh they're called issues like like issues of a comic book so it, it, it's thematic it makes sense uh in this one in the first issue it seemed like they were just spawning all these gangsters and i thought that was kind of cool how they, they're spawning low level enemies uh kind of sending their 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 villains you know the entry level gangsters uh out to test the waters so to speak before the more powerful enemies came out but you know if the other two uh, villains have the same kind of cycle where there's just sending out their little minions first and then it escalates to bigger guys uh, until you get to like the final bosses you know that's kind of the same rhythm i'm wondering if we play like a different villain if it's going to feel completely different and i would hope so um that's that's what would really keep the game fresh Moving on to the next question, uh, I have a question about how long and fiddly is this going to be in real life? So it's hard to judge how long a game is when you're playing it on Tabletop Simulator. Um, and like I said, this is like my third time playing on Tabletop Simulator. This is Orion's first time, I believe. So there's a bit of a learning curve just with the UI of this platform. Uh, and even then, what, it took three hours for a two-player game? with a bit of rules learning, so maybe two and a half hours, hours of actual playing. In real life, I mean, that's Mage Knight levels of length or something, you know, like... Uh, maybe, maybe a hair longer. less than... Maybe, maybe a, a hair less than Mage Knight or, or Spirit Island. A little Island. less than Mage Knight, but similar to Spirit Island with the expansions. So Perhaps. And I don't think it's quite... I mean, just again, based on first impressions, I don't think it's quite as deep as either of those two games. So are you trading off a little bit more fiddliness in this game in terms of like all these different movement tiles that are coming out and all the different cards that are coming out? Like every time you pull out a movement tile, you have to pull out three different cards from two different decks. Every turn you flip a card, which may flip one or two other cards that need to be manipulated. There's a lot of moving cards. And my, my big worry when I was reading the rule book is that with these kinds of deck building games, I find it I've had experiences in the past where the existence of a geographical map just made the game worse. I think it probably works in this game, but maybe it would have been better. I, there's a small chance I think maybe it would have been better as a mapless game and just some more of a focused deck builder. I don't know. But I do have a, some questions and concerns about in real life, is it still going to be a two and a half hour two player game? And is it going to be as annoying to kind of keep track of things and move around so many cards and components? Or is that just the platform of Tabletop Simulator getting to us? Yeah, I had to figure out, like, how to drag things around. How do I even pick up a deck and, you know, flip tokens and cards? And that's just Tabletop. Um, but kind of between the small text and reading everything and all these different cards that trigger each other and what four or five different kinds of tokens um it it does add up uh so going on to our final question is about the growth curve and so you start you have a starter deck which is unique to each hero and it's got very basic cards you know move one space two attack two currency you know basic currency uh different resource cards and uh then there's the union cards which or the union deck, which is 
basically every other card you get in the game and those are strictly better uh, but there's not a progression within that so you have your starter decks your starter deck and then you have everything else is better than it and the really the only thing that kind of controls that is getting enough money into your hand to buy a higher cost card whenever it might appear so mark's uh best card was this five attack that could also be a response and i think you got it on turn two and you just happened to have enough money to be able to buy it or you hit an event or you did something to be able to buy that um but you could have just as easily found that on the last turn of the game as the second turn of the game um so there wasn't as much of this progression uh you are getting stronger just because you have more big good cards in your deck compared to your starter cards uh so your hand has a higher chance of being better uh and i should mention you also have these solo cards which are again unique to your hero and do kind of some thematic combinations there and those you have to build up this other heroism resource to to buy those um and those are more thematic and more powerful than your starter cards uh, i don't know if they were better than the union cards i'd say they're in the higher above the curve of the average union card but not completely out of line um, like in mage net you have your basic actions then you have the advanced actions then you have the spells and you have the artifacts and each one of those gets stronger than the previous tier and this felt like there was the basic tier and then there's kind of everything else in a jumble um and there wasn't there wasn't a lot that forced you into a progression to kind of build a narrative. Um, and that that sense was really just in the enemies coming out and leveling up and running around the city to fight the different threats. And we and we keep bringing up this comparison to Mage Knight and Spirit Island, I think, because those are the two games that immediately come to mind with this. I mean, I think particularly Mage Knight, it has the same kind of thing of drawing a hand, seeing what opportunities uh, that hand gives you and trying to maximize your turn based on that. It's got the same kind of thing where there's randomized enemies and you're moving around a map and you're trying to be efficient. And of course you're building your deck. Uh, but like it, it's a one note progression. So in Spirit Island, you have your starter cards, you have the minor powers, and then you have the major powers. In Mage Knight, you have like those four different tiers Orion talked about here it felt like you know i had my best card by the the first third of the game or the first quarter of the game and i was a bit disappointed that like it didn't scale or progress quite as uh quite as much as those other games where you feel like you are just a fundamentally different fighter uh at the end than you were at the beginning Right? Like, I want to feel like I've become really, really, like, extraordinarily powerful, and I'm up against these massive uh, villains uh, with, like, world-ending powers at the end. But in this one, it was like, okay, we went around, punched some villains, you know, punched some, you know, some gangsters, uh, got a bit more powerful, and then these higher-level goons came out, and then we punched them, and, but it took, like, three turns of punching to kill them. And then the game was over, and that was the two-and-a-half-hour experience. So that felt a little flat, and I'm wondering if with other scenarios, other villains, other combinations, uh, if we, or just like being more focused in, in how we constructed our decks and how we kind of pushed it and tried to get as much economy as possible to uh, try to trash cards and get really high-powered cards, if we'd feel that progression more because we were a bit haphazard with it we just kind of picked up cards here and there we didn't play on any on any high difficulty at all mike so ultimately like like if you're playing at a high level at a high difficulty does the game feel more epic i suppose is what this boils down to um, yeah and this play this play was very much i just if i saw a good card that i could afford i threw it in my deck and that was the end of the thought process mm -hmm. and then it was you know, I wasn't counting cards to see what do I have left in my deck? Do I have enough move to get here? Or do I have enough attack to handle this enemy? Like I have done in Mage Knight, which to be fair, we've played at a higher difficulty than this scenario probably. 
Um, but there was just a little bit of distance for me between this kind of lighthearted superhero game that take that took two and a half hours and what I kind of expect from a two and a half hour deck building adventure game. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this might fudge that a little bit. And, and again, first time playing it, inexperienced on tabletop, all the caveats we've mentioned are there. So I don't know, to be determined. Yeah, um, and, and we're kind of ending on a downer here, but I'd like to say like, I was very impressed with the game overall. We had fun, oh, yeah. we laughed, you know, reading the cards and all the crazy scenarios that popped up. We had difficult decisions and interesting decisions. It actually came down to very close at the end. I had only a couple of health points left. You know, Ryan had, was, oh, I, was dead. I got knocked out. Yeah. Or, or taken out, I think, is the nomenclature in the rule book. Um, so there was suspense there. And there were interesting and fun decisions throughout. So, I mean, these questions are, th are things that legitimately, I think, can go either way. Like, maybe it ends up being a bit flat compared to some of its uh, contemporaries, which, I mean, it's put itself up against, uh, in our minds at least, some of the greatest games ever conceived, uh, just in, yeah, I mean, in, in the style of game. Uh, th those games we're mentioning are top 10 games for us, so, yeah. you know, that's a high bar to compare it to. Uh, but I think genuinely, right, I think it could transform and become a different even more fascinating game if you push yourself on a much higher difficulty level and you're forced to find those strategies and tensions uh, that m end up making your hero really amazing, uh, but at the you know with with a, with a lot more grinding and gruelness in between as you're trying to make the deck as good as possible. And if that works, I think this could be a, an excellent game for sure. Yeah, w one of the strategy considerations I could see is trying to spawn certain locations in certain areas or like noting, oh, we saw the city hall. This is how we use that to get into the next phase of the game. Uh, or just those sorts of micro tactical decisions could really add a lot of depth. Yeah. And I think, I think if you focused in the early game on these city cards, uh, because most of them give you a reward uh, when you defeat them and just your random enemy mostly doesn't give you a reward. So like all the card trashing, for instance, that I saw came from city cards and we only explored less than half of the possible spaces. I wonder if you took an approach that really tried to burst out the gate, exploring as much as possible and getting the city cards dealt with while trying to avoid rather than spend time fighting enemies. I wonder if that results in a better end game deck for you because you're able to do more with your cards and such. Yeah. And there is another hero that gets like a bunch of free valor every time he explores a new tile. Um, oh, interesting. That would be fun so to that play. That would really push you towards exploring and trying to buy up a bunch of cards early on. Yeah, um, but lots of interesting stuff to things to consider with this game. Again, Union City Alliance. It's going to be on Kickstarter uh, in just a week or two, I believe. Um, you heard our analysis here. I can't give any final verdict. This is a first impressions video. Um, but if this is the kind of game that you're interested, if you like superheroes, if you like these medium to medium heavyweight cooperative games, if you like deck building, if this is the kind of game that interests you, I think you should definitely look into it. I think there's a lot of potential here. I don't know if that potential will be realized over multiple plays, but it's definitely something to consider. And if you'd like to support us here at The Thoughtful Gamer, go to patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. Look, I just got it, some kind of Steam achievement. Uh, I have no idea how the achievements work in this game, but I got something. Yeah! Oh, they flipped the table. Uh, again, that's patreon.com slash thethoughtfulgamer. And if you haven't, go to thethoughtfulgamer.com for all kinds of written reviews, podcasts, etc. We don't just do videos. In fact, video is a very small part of it right now. So uh, if you like this, check out that other stuff. We appreciate any help you can give. Thanks for watching.